Thank you for staying with us. Now, Nigeria is a country of young people, and so sports is a major segment in this country. And that has been the case since the 40s and intensified after independence. Even though football has taken up a lion's share of time and resources, many other sports like athletics, boxing, basketball have thrown up some memorable moments in the Nigerian sporting history. So as we attempt to review the outing of the Nigerian athletes uh, of the just concluded Tokyo Olympics, one can't help but wonder how well do we even understand the sporting business in Nigeria and what can we do to harness the potential of sports in our very youthful population. Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 So I'm going to bring in our guests like in a minute. I just want to understand, do you see our sporting, um, our sporting industry in Nigeria or um, sports ministry in Nigeria, you, when you see it, do you see it that these people are really serious and they know what they're doing in terms well, of business? You know the <laughs> no, I'm just asking me. <laughs> because every time we get perplexed, you know, sometimes I wonder, and I'm, I'm really excited about the guest that we have today because of his vast, you know, experience. And I'm like, when I see other sports people, in other clients. I wonder, is it a different kind of sport? This one, they run differently because they make so much money. And then, I, I Just suppose that. Yes, too. and then you're wondering, ah, there's something that's not adding up. And then you, the, when you hear the politics of it, all the selection, then you don't want to talk about the fact that if it's not football, it's not happening. Mm. I'm so glad that we're having this because I really want to understand, mm. you know, do we have, can you know, sports be a business in Nigeria? Do we have a future for it? Making, can I, you know, train my daughter towards you know, yeah. I know it's what I to go and do their first and then come back to do Olympics mm. for us. Okay. So how about you, Dami? I think it can be improved upon. We mm. don't have enough apparently and there is room for improvement. But I like to learn more about the business side of sport. Mm. Really, that's what I'm more keen about because for me, it's about... We can just have a Milola <laughs> sporting line. <laughs> it's possible, actually. We can actually produce damage for them. I'm telling you. Mm. All right, so I'm going to bring in our guest. Bukola Olopade is the CEO of Nilayo Sports Management Limited, a sport management and marketing company who have worked with some of the biggest names in the world of sports like the IAF, the CAA, and the AFN. He has also served in various leadership capacity as the president, Nigerian Wheelchair Basketball, Basketball Federation, Ogun State Commissioner for Youth and Sport, and also the Special Advisor to the Governor of Ogun State on Youth and Sport. He is a well-grounded sportsman, <laughs> and we're truly honored to be having him to have this conversation. And he's live with us in studio. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Bukola Lokbadi, for coming to to grace our 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 set. You know, but you see, this conversation is been. I mean, social media went agog mm. when we saw our short put finalist, Washi Jersey, <laughs> Jersey that, um, according to the reports that we saw online, Puma had given Nigeria free jerseys, which they, according to the report, you know, you, had, you will tell us the real story, which they declined to go and buy jerseys. And we now found our athletes, you know, doing that. And again, the other athletes that had to protest because a mandatory yeah, test that fine. they did not take. What exactly is the business like, the business side of sporting in Nigeria? And how much interference is, um, how, much in, how much government interference that we have today in our sporting industry in Nigeria is affecting, how much of it is affecting, you know, the growth and the success of our sporting industry in Nigeria? So you've literally asked three different questions. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to um, say too much on the Puma, Puma issue um, because it's something before the courts um, between the AFN, the Ministry of Sports, and my background is law, so I have to be careful what I say about it if I, I get myself into trouble. But I do not think we should always believe everything we see on social media. Mm. The truth be said, an athlete that was given whether one shirt or two shirts or three shirts will still have to wash mm. the shirt anyway. It's making a big deal out of it from that thrower that I have a lot of respect for, for me, made no sense. And f for that, I really don't want to say much. But let's talk about sports business. And I like your final approach to the question. Mm. As government interference, either we positively affected or negatively affected yes. either sports business or um, men and women because you guys um, are 
you've spoken about our participation at the Olympics and the abysmal um, performances that people have complained about. I don't want to um, call it abysmal because we still came back with a silver and a bronze. Yeah, unlike the unlike the last first um, Olympics, we didn't um, come up with nothing. Nothing. Was nothing. No um, credit must be given to Esther Brume and, um, and blessing you, for the yes. job. Nilayo actually promised, no, challenged Esther Brume that get yourself on the podium on TV. We'll give you ten thousand dollars, and we'll be waiting for her at the airport with that money. Oh, fantastic! Wow. Just to say thumbs up to her. But the, to your to your question. A few weeks ago, I had a discussion where the a KPMG report of 2018 clearly stated that after tech, after tech, Nigeria and Africa must look at sports, mm. and that right now we are scratching the surface of sports business, and the opportunities that are bound in sports business are ridiculously huge. That was a KPMG report in 2018. Their focus was on esports. Because you're right, when they say football, everybody think that is sports. A 14-year-old two years ago won $3 million from winning his sports competition. The esports industry in Nigeria is growing rapidly. rapidly. And the money involved is still not enough. Mm. What should government do? Government must first of, first of all recognize the fact that sport is a contributor to the GDP. The vice president last year if I'm not mistaken, last year, 2019, clearly stated 43 contributory agencies to the GDP, and sports was left out. I went on TV and I said, no, that can be correct. When we look at the contribution of sports, either through poverty alleviation, through creation of wealth, you would agree with me that by the time the statisticians do their job properly, they'll see that sports business, dope still being scratched on the wall, is contributing a lot to the GDP. So to that end, and based on your question, I need government to do more, to encourage the private sector to support sports so that sports business can thrive. Now, if sports business thrives, the effect, the trickle down effect on participants, stakeholders, players, athletes, um, officials would grow. And from there, you discover that we start to win more gold medals. Because the truth of the matter is, you need to go to the grassroots to plant the seed mm -hmm. that will be germinated for all of us to have a feel-good factor. Because what happens when they win the medals? It doesn't come to your own or my own. Well, you are excited. You have a feel-good factor mm -hmm. that carries you for, for a very long time. So I feel government still needs to do more. But sports business, like you rightly said, is beyond football. Mm. When I was when I left as commissioner, the first thing I did was to go and study sports management at the master's level at the Nessie Mandela Metropolitan University in South Africa because I had seen that this is a cash cow. But I did not understand it. And I needed to understand mm. the act of doing business in sports. And that was what led to Nilayo Sports Management that today the, the biggest sponsored sports program in Nigeria, yes, I don't care what Lagos City Marathon. Absolutely, I don't care what biggest. football brings. Is the biggest sponsored sport, sporting program in Nigeria, and when you look cumulatively at all the road races that Nilayo has done in the last seven years, which is about almost we have like six brands now, and we're working on Abuja. You agree with me that looking beyond football, a lot can be made, Ernest and take it out of other sports, creating the avenue to, for younger people to be paid and become wealthy in their own ways and alleviate poverty. Mm. My advice, quickly, is that we need to study more. We need to, she says she wants to know more mm. about the sporting business. Spot on. There are too many young people out there who want to go into the sporting business and who just believe owning a football club, owning a player, or just, having one thing to do with the Ministry of Sports is enough. No, there is a science to the business of sports mm -hmm. and you must learn it. And I think that is where the gap is. But let me come to you, Akanima. Okay, so <coughs> we have talked, and I really want to do with something that you have not addressed, which is the politics in our sporting. Mm -hmm. um, so there is the... Are you talking about sports participation or sports business? 
Um, so it has to be. I don't know it what has to be. So sports you, participation. Have, you must help okay. me put it in order. Let me explain <laughs> the layman terms because obviously I'm, I'm not an expert here. So there's the AFN and there's the Ministry of Sports. First and foremost, help us tie what is the relationship between the two. Between the two. And why do they always seem as loggerheads? Because I think I, I watched on TV and someone was saying, the poor man, don't blame the AFN, blame the Ministry of Sports. You know, so what is the relationship between the Ministry of Sports and the AFN? And do you think that these, there should be more, because from what we're hearing and reading, there seems to be friction, which is actually affecting the, the performance and, you know, the growth of sports. So please help us um, put that in perspective. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you an illustration for you to understand it better. Mm. I, I was very impressed with uh, Uwa reeling out stuff about me because when she asked me this afternoon, <laughs> I strategically gave her only Bukola Lokpade Nila Sports Management. Leaving her to do our research. And she <laughs> said, yes, what are you, CEO, MD? I said, you know, I don't like titles. Mm -hmm. Eventually I said, you CEO. I didn't give her the other stuff. So thank you for doing your research. I was the president, I was the president of the Nigeria Wheelchair Basketball Federation. Mm -hmm. A federation that um, was obscured, nobody knew about it. And through the business sense of sports, we raised every year close to 800 million naira for that sport, unknown sports. Mm -hmm. But when, when it was time for re-election, the then minister Dalong, mm -hmm. due to his own interest, I, want, I don't want to go into, disqualified me for no reason. He used his ministry to disqualify me. I know the reason, but I'm not going to go into those mundane issues because it, that has led to the total destruction of that spot that was on the way up. And it was growing. Rapidly disqualified me. I did not argue. I allowed it to go. You know why? The Ministry of Sports is the father and mother and the god of every sport. Wow. So AFN, if you are the president of AFN and you say you will not subscribe to directives from the same body that puts you together mm. under a decree, decree 37 if I'm not mistaken, mm. and under laws, different laws establishing you as a federation. Yeah. Why won't you go be at Logaids? Let me ask you a question. Every federation, they all have Secretary General. The question is, where do, Secretary General, where do they come from? You know the answer? From the, they come from the, from the ministry. From the ministry. They are seconded from the ministry. But are they not supposed to act autonomous of the ministry? Ideally. So <laughs> that in that sense, they should not have to succumb to every whims and caprice of the ministry. So, so that's a different argument. But again, as parents, eh? Yeah, when you grow up a child to a particular level, mm. it is ideal that you expect that child to have a life. Not when that child is still living under my roof <laughs> and collecting money from me. Oh, that's exactly. So, you're, so now the challenge is that they're not independent. Well, thank you. you. The child's the capacity to, to be, be independent autonomous. and make money on their own. That's Good. Fantastic question. I know that when Sunday Diary, this very progressive minister, I don't care what anybody says today, Sunday Diary is the best minister we've had in a long time, and I've worked with so many. Mm. I've been in this industry for 20, 21 years or so. As a commissioner, that's an, as an, an administrator, who took my state from 19th position at, of the national ladder to the second, who hosted the best mm. sports festival ever in this country, that's and cool. and left a profit, talking about business of sports. Mm. When we hosted in 2006, we declared a profit of 96 million naira, never done before, and we did not collect a couple from the state government. We raised every money from the private sector. Independent of the ministry it, and the government. No, no, we worked with the ministry. The ministry owns the festival. You, I don't care what you say. The ministry owns sports. If not, then there will be no ministry of sports. What mm -hmm. are they pretending over? Over. But the point I was trying to make... The ministry is not supposed to be in the business. They're supposed to be in governance and regulation. The business of sports is different from the federating of sports agencies. Why would they there are two different things. Why would a government infrastructure, a government entity, entity. be doing business? Okay, you in know, the no, no, you are, you, let, I'm let agreeing with you. Point, yes. The She's ministry is not doing business. I'm so, agreeing with you. Okay. What I'm saying to you is that you asked why is the ministry mm -hmm. superintending over the federation? Yes. I gave you an illustration and I said I did not argue because I knew it was within the 
powers of the law mm -hmm. to disqualify me. Mm -hmm. his, his, his excuse was that I was the CEO of the football league. Mm. So there's a conflict of interest according to his reason for dismissal. The, his excuse, mm. he didn't dismiss me. They disqualified me and I said, let it be. Okay. I didn't fight it. Okay. Because I love the sport and I like it to grow. The president, Guzo, that is fighting this minister and the ministry, loves athletics and I know he does. Mm. When you love something, you do not build a house and demolish it yourself. Mm. Yes, right? When you sign a deal with Puma, you've done well. Right? That deal is for Nigeria. The deal is for Athletics Federation of Nigeria, mm -hmm. not your family or your cronies. Mm. Now, if they have materials meant for athletes, you put it out there for the country mm. and for the athletes. You grow beyond your mundane selfish interest mm. or your ego. Mm. For me, no matter the good job that any one of them would have done from the Federation, allowing it to affect young boys and girls okay. goes beyond the love you it's, claim it's, it's, you have for the sport. The sabotage of your best okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So let, wait, wait, let, me take, let me take a break. Absolutely. Very, very short break, right? Today is not for phone calls. I'm sorry we can't take calls. Just send us your messages. We'll take a break. We'll continue the conversation. Very short break. We'll be right back. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having an amazing chat with Bukolo Lopade on the business of sports in Nigeria. <laughs> Please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation today. Send us SMS and WhatsApp only on 081-803-84663. We can't do phone calls today. We're sorry. All right. So, um, you are going to talk about business. Yes. What I, before we go into the business, right? Because you mentioned something very pertinent about, you know, your understanding and how you had to go back to go to, get to sports new knowledge. management that's the business of sports management mm -hmm. in your in your assessment of the current people since now we're dealing with the umbrella body which is the ministry of sports mm -hmm. in your assessment how well do you think they understand that this is a business and how well do you see them doing in terms of making that business thrive you know, you know one thing we, we we love to do in nigeria is to create armchair critics everywhere. Mm. I've worked with a lot of the technocrats at the ministry, either as an administrator or as a businessman. You'll be shocked to know that we have the most qualified people in the Ministry of Sports, mm. intellectually gifted, Damn. qualified. We have PhD holders at the ministry. On sports, those who have spent their entire life studying sports. Have they thrived with it? That's a debate that we will continue to have. Have they been given the um, atmosphere to thrive? That's another debate. But you know, earlier you mentioned the federal government. I want to thank the federal government for creating the um, economic summit on sports. Mm -hmm. The economic summit on sports was put together by some eggheads that you must but just respect. People like Nke Chiubi, who a woman that I respect a lot. Whatever we are making today in terms of Naira and Kobo in business of sports, people like Nke Chiubi, Shagun Ekbami, and Co. spearheaded uh, Mikey Temagbo, spearheaded the, 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 the act of making money from sports, mm -hmm. and credit must be given to them for the document that they've put together today, the sports policy, Business, sports business policy mm. put together to the under the office of the vice president. And I believe by the time implementation starts, if implementation starts, mm, if. more people <laughs> will start to benefit like from sports business. Sports business um, is massive. I know. I am enjoying it. The young people you know that have worked with me are enjoying it. There are people who either to add nothing to look up to who have worked with Neil Ayo and the, sp the sports we, we do, who have become very independent and very bold in their, doing their own things today. We are building capacity, we are creating businessmen and women out of sports and look, together we can do a lot and I thank you for this program. A lot of people don't pick up these issues and this is a, a very important issue you've picked up today and I thank you very much for it. Thank mm. you very much. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to ask a question for my enlightened self-interest. Mm. 
it, apparently there's a gap in the knowledge available to understand sports as a hobby mm. or sport as business. Correct. Now it's important that you clearly, just for the benefit of trying new things and understanding what are the opportunities that exist in this sector, how do sports become a business for a layman who really just does, does sport for fun as against wanting to do sport for business? You know, you, so yesterday I had a discussion with um, a gentleman called Atta Batele. Is, is, an, is, is a tech whiskey, making a lot of money from tech. And we had this argument on which of these two industries. Contrive. No, we don't, we don't, you can't, tech is the father of it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I will is, not go into that argument. Tech is the future. <laughs> but the, the argument was which of these two industries is actually impacting more on poor people and elevating poverty mm. and creating more. Mm. Sport. I mean, did you see the video when they went to, what's her name, um, Blessings Family? A, a particular media house went to her family. The to, wrestler? Yes, to, wow. to, to interview them. You, I mean, tears you came out of my eyes. You can see real. that she's coming from a very humble background. Mm. So this to, has already transformed. Lives. Yeah, go ahead. Please. And the trickle down effect yes. of a blessing is that the now community. she's, she's going to have a brand manager yes. wow. creating job for that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More nutritionist, mm -hmm. creating jobs for those ones. The trickle down effect of sports, massive. The it's, business of sports. I, I, I like. I like how you have. But she's, mentioned, uh, yeah. she's asked a question that is also very important. Yes, very. So for me, the first thing you tell a layman is that sports, though a veritable tool of entertainment, though a veritable tool of empowerment, but is also a Elite. very strong tool of revenue earning. Mm, okay. And the first thing you must explain is that get yourself knowledgeable on the spots that you want to market. Okay, so you have to narrow it down to a specific one. I, I, I believe, I believe um, creating a bespoke um, approach to sports business would help a lot. All of us cannot do road races. Mm. I've seen a lot of road races and I just laugh. But you need to know the technology behind organizing a road race that will make it profitable for you. Yeah. We own a football club at Nilayo, playing in the professional league, right? My general manager came to, with me to, uh, to this interview. He's going to hate me for what I'm going to say. But I just said to him, I want to buy a house in Houston. I need you to sell a player for one million, two million dollars, yeah. because I'm putting so much money in that club, and you are, I need to see the revenue. So it's a challenge, he knows, within the next two years, it's to get me $4 million that I can go and pay for my house in Houston. It's, it's right here. <laughs> but because I do not understand the business of football, he does. Mm. Then I must challenge him. You must look for the right people to, to partner with. So don't just say because you have money to invest in sports, you want to run it yourself. You look for the leverage. best people. Who can to, manage it. Right. Okay. As a layman. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I, I like how we're shifting towards where I'm going to, and that's education. Again, in some climes, you can see that sports is even hope for some people when you talk about um, um, scholarships to school. You oh, see everyone so God. interested in sports. Now, looking at our education system, mm. do you think that we have to bring up... Because I think it's too late to practice for Olympics, four years to the Olympics. God bless you. Mm. Because some of these people have been swimming their whole lives in their school and they've been taking the sport seriously. So I really want you to talk yeah, about case point. I have I have one, one fantastic swimmer. Mm. Yeah, so I want you to talk about, and I'm not looking at the, when I'm talking, I'm talking about um, the government's public schools, because the private people are settling their children. Mm. So, <laughs> but the public schools, what is the hope? I don't, nowadays, I don't even hear of PE sports, I don't even hear of all those things. So what is the hope Can at that, of that one? Number two, if people want to learn about the business of sports, do we have that? Need job? Do we have a place where people will learn? Is it a course in the financial? Um, sorry, I said financial institution. In our, <laughs> in, 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 our, in our universities, can people go and learn about? Sports? Absolutely, I know wow. the University of Lagos, University of Ibadan, Ife, I think Osuka, they all have very solid sports management uh, departments. Okay. Aside from that, there are so many short courses that I just came back from Salt Lake. Where I went to that, do. You say Salt Lake and you say South Africa. No, listen, I, I went okay. to do a course again to improve myself on the next thing mm. that I want to do in sport, which is esports. So, mm. to answer your question, yes, you must start from somewhere. We have very good institutions and short courses that even Lagos Business School 
organize. I mean, I've sent my staff to Lagos Business School um, before. I sent my, one of my staff to South Africa to study the same course I studied. And she got the best results in the world hmm. in mm -hmm. a FIFA course. She got the best results in the world. Um, because she had been schooled in the office, she had been schooled at Lagos Business School, then she took it further. Today she's in Penn and she's doing her own thing and I'm very proud of her always. The truth of the matter is, I don't know the way we think in this country, but I know we are the smartest people in the world. You just asked a question that is not rocket science. What is wrong with us having a school of excellence that would create a system where indigent students and children can get those scholarships you're talking about. If it's not a scholarship to send them abroad, why not create a scholarship system that will take them from their various village schools to Unilag, to Yabatek, to the University Business and School, and Atlantic University. And this is why I like Sunday Diary. Mm. Sunday Diary started the Principal's Cup again and mm. it's not restricted to football. Mm. That for me Good. is the catch. Mm. Because Prince Vasco has all in the synonymous with, with football. football. Yes. But this gentleman said, look, we have educated students who can box. Hmm. So he's put in boxing, he's put in badminton, table tennis, I think about six or seven sports. The first edition is gone as a trial. Huge success. They are now rebuilding it. And one of the things he's talking about is how to create scholarship from that system. Wow. But you know, you spoke to my Dean, because I, I mean, like, oh, we have a scholarship system, we have children because of sports that we've sent to school. Mm -hmm. Just recently, four of our players, and this is really sad what I want to say now, and I don't know if I should say this on TV. Mm -hmm. Four of our players were picked by American universities, um, they just finished secondary school, mm -hmm. and all four of them agreed to go back to high school in the United States. So on Tuesday, we had a Zoom meeting. Um, with the players and the coaches and the educators, those who would give the scholarship. It was a huge disappointment. All four players could not piece together sentences. Yeah. And I felt so sad for them mm -hmm. because I know all they want to do is play football, but I also know that that the system, that system you will project them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they you lost know, the scholarship. You know, you know, there's something you... Yeah. you when... Um, it, Eke was asking that question. I remember when I was in university first year. I remember the, the Nougat Games or something. Correct. Yeah. Oma, when you go, it's at your detriment <laughs> because if Fun. there's exams going on, no, nobody will. Right? Excuse nobody will say That's this right. person has gone to represent. I know someone that plays judo. I mean, she's a fantastic judo um, sports person. She failed some of her courses because she couldn't make, so it had to be. So at that point, parents would begin to tell you, oh, I didn't send you to school, school to, to go and play school. judo or that to go and do. Do you understand? So how do we even tie it? Because when AK was talking about education, education. Mm -hmm. that was what just I, came to my mind. Because we keep saying we want to promote sport. On the other hand, there's no synergy, there's no synergy. between the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of, of Sports. Sport. Because now, a lot of children do not even want to go and compete for any Nougat game. They are not interested in any university games. Because when they go there, Funding. it's not like you are waiting for them to say, okay, no, or you can organize their own mm -hmm. uh, uh, exams differently or something. So how can we even make that work? Because because mm. if we say we want to be serious about the business of sports, every child should not be, first of all, um, um, what's the word now? Well, it's, it's, just, it's not stigmatized. Where you go and... There needs to be an integration. There has to be an integration process where everybody, even if you are a sports person, you're not a sports person, you can still... You have to be recognized. Alongside with your education, you can still do your sports, which is what they have in the schools you're talking about in mm. the US. Mm. So, first of all, there is a synergy between um, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Sports. Um, At what level? The tertiary level? So it's called the National School Sports okay. um, Games. And if you notice, in the last two years, again, this minister has always done the Youth um, National Sports Festival yeah, okay. alongside the Ministry of Education. But guess what? The answer to that headache you have mm -hmm. was what she raised earlier on. When you have a scholarship system, you would go and represent your university and come back and do your own exam when there's a scholarship system. system. Okay, so, so that's the solution. 
That's the solution. Mm. You need a scholarship center that recognizes that you are only in the university because of your talent, mm. but we also want you to be educated. Mm. Do you get? So it will be a quid pro quo where lecturers will tell you, you fail this course, you won't play sports. Mm. Yes. So there's an incentive yes. to driving your, your ability to, to excel in your too. natural, naturally given talent mm -hmm. and the incentive for you to acquire knowledge and education mm. so that, A, if it doesn't happen for you, you have something to fall back on. Yeah. That is why the scholarship system is important. Mm -hmm. And it is very integral to sports business. You are correct. If we start doing these things, you just know that sports business will continue to expand. And it is important that government and every stakeholder support sports business because of the trickle-down effects. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. The amount of people that benefit from just one successful sporting entity, just one successful sporting entity, it's enormous. I, I agree with you, and I, even beyond going going beyond money, just even to keep people engaged and keep people hopeful. Because when you talked about then it's no longer business. Yes, we must talk about money. <laughs> no, no, no. I agree. I agree. But then again, you're getting a lot of kids off the, the streets because if my school has an infrastructure. For, do you know there's a lot of practice that go into that? And mm. people want to be the best. So you see a lot of people come because they know that the future is bright. Correct. So you see now, Blessing has projected her family and they her community. Her community. That, so you and I might take you know, the camera pointing at us for granted, but for that, it is hope. Correct. For a child in Correct. that um, environment, it just says that I can go beyond my environment if I am succeeding. I can break ceilings. Thank Correct. You. Mm. So I, I, for me, beyond the money, which is absolutely really very important. important. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I love what about the money. No, no, it's, also, it's very important. But for me, that hope factor, especially it's in this country, where everything really is gone. Thinking about okay. money. Thank you very much. For, and uh, you have to do it because of those that benefit it aside the fact that you are in debt for business and for, and for the money okay so if you had one final thing to say because i was even thinking is it not possible if we just remove government hand from sporting business general completely in nigeria mm. but for what you have said I don't know whether that can you remove government and from tech, anything. <laughs> from, <laughs> from oil and gas, <laughs> from banking. <laughs> no, no. But so, if you had one thing to say mm. um, to, because now we really want to talk to the Ministry of Sports, you know, about the the beauty about this business called sports, you know, what would what would that be, you know, so we can wrap up on that. Well, first of all, I want to apologize to Nigerians mm. who are very disappointed about um, oh, out, our, in out in uh, the Olympics. Um, but to also appeal to them to give credit to whom credit is due and to just hope for a better Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next year. Because this sports minister, Sunday Dari, that we have, I'm not here to campaign for him, but I know the difference between all the ministers that I've worked with. This is a minister that introduced Adopt an Athlete. Hmm. which led to blessing being adopted by the Bayelsa state government, wow. which led to Toby Amusho being adopted by the Ogo state government, which led to 12 athletes being adopted by the Delta state government. And I, I can go on and on. Recently, Governor Songolu adopted like almost five athletes and they got paid immediately. Hmm. The adoption simply means money towards your training. Hmm. And it is not just Amazing. it is not just for the Olympics. Mm. It is a continuous, it's an adoption. You know when you adopt a child, it's forever. Forever. So it is an adoption that keeps those states who have adopted and those companies. Because I know Alojin, for example, adopted uh, Adegunroye, the wrestler. Unfortunately, she, uh, she, she lost out through some accident. Um, she was winning, eight nil, and she lost out through an accident. But that was a private sector um, organization that adopted that wrestler. And it is forever, mm. which simply means coming back from the Olympics, all of these athletes and a lot of them have they been have adopted. Funds available they just adopted a big okay, hmm. Enoch, and Enoch got to the final, the first, yes, the third first, Nigerian yes. to get to the final of the 100 meter sprint, yeah. male. Yes. And he got there because of the encouragement from Edo State. So, literally, what this minister has done is to shift the paradigm. Mm. But I told him once, I said, when you shift the paradigm and you want to create change, you will step on toes, and when you step on toes, 
be prepared for the backlash, but keep your eyes on the ball and be focused. And that will be my last shot, that Nigerians should support this minister to continue with a brilliant job he has started. Um, you called me here because a lot of people do not know. Mm. I'm an insider in mm. the industry, mm. and I've told you. But for the young people watching, I'm begging people, come and join this industry. The money is sweet. The money is enormous. The, the money is enormous. And trust me, you can become a multimillionaire overnight mm. through sports. Come and join us, but educate yourself on it and be part of it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's Thank a beautiful way so to much. wrap it up. Thank you. We call our love buddy. Thank you, Milola, and thank you, Aki. My pleasure. Her business name sounds like mine. Milola, Nilayo. Ah, Nilayo. <laughs> yes, I had when you were coming. All right, she's going to do apparel on Nilayo. So before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Waste Your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. Most importantly, we're planning a giveaway to say thank you to you for believing in the Waste brand and following the conversation. So do well to follow us now. It's at Waste Your Africa. So if you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's a very short and simple quote. Professional sports is a business. <laughs> uh, let me use Mr. Olo by these words it's a very sweet juicy <laughs> lucrative business juicy. so we're looking for more people to come into the sport let's we have the talents here and we have potential to do great things in sports we'll see you next time as we bring another great conversation to your screen enjoy